The current state of diversity and inclusion in the UK's digital health industry and recent actions taken. The deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Armand Aubrey and others have ignited a call for change, first in the US and then globally, leading to weeks of protests and demonstrations that highlight the long-standing issues of racism and racial inequality. In the UK, the Black Lives Matter movement has also motivated us to confront and address the inequalities endured by Black and BAME communities and to renew our commitment to bringing about the change needed to eliminate racism and discrimination. The recent series of events have also revealed the vast disparities that impact UK BAME workers within the health tech industry. Research from inclusive boards found that just 8.5% of senior leaders in the health tech industry were black, Asian and minority ethnic, and nearly 75% of boards had no ethnic minority representation. According to the Shuri Network, a UK-based support network for BAME women in digital health roles, out of around 500 senior digital positions in the NHS in England, there were less than 10 BAME women in CIO, CCIO or equivalent roles in 2019, despite over 75% of the NHS workforce being female and 20% identifying as BAME. So, how did the digital health world react? Almost immediately, big global tech and digital health brands were quick to publicly condemn racism during the protests. They've been swift to put in place campaigns and internal diversity and inclusion boards and offices to combat issues such as unconscious bias in recruitment and lack of diversity within the workforce, with the aim to stimulate understanding and action around Black Lives Matter. A timeline of how the healthcare world responded to Black Lives Matter. Looking at the UK's response more closely, in June 2020, in an open letter seen by Healthcare IT News, CEO of NHSX, Matthew Gold said, I'm inviting all our colleagues, particularly, but not only black and other BAME colleagues, to sit remotely with me and other senior leadership team members and tell us about your experience, both about issues in the NHSX and how we tackle them, and more widely about your experience of racism and exclusion. This message came on the heels of NHS Chief Executive Simon Stevens internally sharing a message on Black Lives Matter with all NHS England and NHS Improvement staff, where he stressed the need for faster action on the reality of racism still experienced by many across the NHS. In the message, Stevens states that it would be wrong to marginalise this moment by trying to compartmentalise it as racism over there in America, not here in Britain. He went on to say, It is increasingly clear that COVID-19 is having a disproportionate impact on our black, Asian and minority ethnic patients, friends and colleagues. And this in turn has brought into stark and urgent focus the layered impacts of years of disadvantage and inequality. Although the workforce race equality standards shows NHS organisations have made some progress on core HR processes in recent years, in the areas of recruitment and selection and training opportunities, as well as a 30% increase of senior managers of BAME backgrounds, Stephen highlights that no one thinks this is yet good enough or fast enough. The letter also mentioned the launch of the NHS Race and Health Observatory, a new independent centre to stimulate understanding and action. Also in response to the protests, HIMS launched the HIMS Global Health Equity Network to accelerate diversity and inclusion, to improve healthcare access and delivery, create an inclusive workforce, decrease disparities in underrepresented groups, and advocate for true health equity for all. In this statement, HIMS said, the issue of racism and the inequities people of color face must not be accepted and cannot continue to be ignored. As one HIMS, We stand united against racial inequality and injustice. Data representation of ethnicity in healthcare. Healthcare inequalities experienced across the UK have become even more apparent during the coronavirus crisis. An area that has received coverage for its failure to BAME communities is the lack of representation in the COVID-19 data analysis and storage. In June 2020, it was highlighted that the Data Protection Impact Assessment run by Palantir on the NHS COVID-19 data store would not be broken down by ethnicity. This is despite BAME people being disproportionately affected by the virus. 
Also in June 2020, a review published by Public Health England found that the highest age standardised diagnosis rates of COVID-19 per 100,000 population were in people of black ethnic groups and the lowest were in people of white ethnic groups. An analysis of survival among confirmed COVID-19 cases showed that, after accounting for the effect of sex, age, deprivation and region, people of Bangladeshi ethnicity had around twice the risk of death when compared to people of white British ethnicity. People of Chinese, Indian, Pakistani, other Asian, Caribbean and other black ethnicity had between 10 and 50% higher risk of death when compared to white British people. The Shuri Network has previously warned the analysis of BAME data cannot be passed between departments as a hot potato too difficult to confront and has called for a stronger focus from leaders to address these inequalities in data. Also in response to these findings, Oxford University offered its tech services for free to help find reasons why the BAME community is at greater risk from coronavirus. Zagami, the Oxford University spin-out, has called on the government to review what data it is collecting on the COVID-19 crisis by ethnic groups. Quotes from leaders on how to do better. In an interview with Healthcare IT News, Global Digital Health Advisor Sam Shah said, the most important thing is to talk to other people, find allies, seek advice and support, and when the moment is right, raise the issue or do something. It may not be immediate, it may take some time, but don't give up on it. Pick the right moment so you remain as safe as possible in the job that you're doing, because unfortunately, the way the system is constructed for those who speak out, they will not work again if the system doesn't want them to. On COVID-19 and the impact on BAME communities, Dr. Shira Chuk, Shuri Network co-founder said, the current crisis has been called a once in a career opportunity to transform the NHS. Instead, perhaps we should call it a once in a career opportunity to reduce health inequalities and discrimination. NHS Chief Executive Simon Stevens said, the NHS as an embedded part of society is both part of the problem and part of the solution. More systematic action is needed to tackle the underlying causes of health inequality. More intentional action is needed to deliver on the moral basis of the NHS, the pursuit of high quality care for all, and faster action is needed on the reality of the racism and discrimination experienced by many across the NHS. Advice and campaigns from leaders and the digital health world around diversity and inclusion have been plentiful and no doubt insightful. However, the real challenge for the UK health tech industry will be transitioning these findings and awareness towards policies and practices that stand the test of time. While there is still much to be determined about how exactly these initiatives will impact the health and technology space in the long run, it has undoubtedly inspired conversation about the pressing need for diversity and inclusion within our most essential healthcare spaces in the UK. This has been Sarah McGeet signing off.